I've been asked to put together a video dealing with the proper Christian attitude towards ambition. Now, ambition means you have a strong desire to achieve or to do something. And I believe the person who asked this is, is asking more uh, of, of a secular type of ambition. Is it okay for a Christian to strive for, uh, let's say, promotions at work? Or what if a Christian becomes famous? Is it wrong to be popular uh, by society's standards and so forth? And uh, the Bible does have plenty to say about this, actually. As it pertains to your status in life, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 7, in verse 21, If you're called being a servant, care not for it, but if you can be made free, use it rather. So we can see from that verse that it's not wrong to seek an improvement in your worldly status. To go from slave to free uh, would obviously be a step up in most people's minds and therefore I think the same principle would apply in the workplace if you can go from uh, being just a lower level employee to management if you can achieve that higher level at work and it's not going to hinder your spiritual life and your walk with God, then I think it would be perfectly fine to, to strive for such a thing. Paul does caution us a few verses later that whatever your calling is, abide in that calling with God. So if you are able to improve your status of life and continue to have a strong relationship with the Lord, then I see nothing wrong with having that ambition in your workplace or in your secular life. Uh, Paul also cautions the rich in this world. He says in 1 Timothy 6 verse 17, charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, not to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. So in that verse, we see that it's not wrong to be rich and you're allowed to enjoy what you have. But Paul also puts some priorities there make sure that the emphasis is not on the money. Don't be trusting the money, but rather the God who gave you the money. And the next verse also talks about how a, a rich person should be rich in good works. So if somebody has secular ambition, that's fine, as long as it is not overshadowing their spiritual ambition. Paul said this in Philippians 3, he said, I count all things but dung that I may win Christ. He says, I've suffered the loss of all things that I may know Christ better. Uh, tremendous statement. How many people will give up and sacrifice the secular so that they can achieve something in the spiritual world? In Philippians 3, verse number 14, Paul said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So I would not rebuke anyone for pressing towards the mark of a high calling of their job. I don't think that's a sin. I believe you can, you can achieve secular success and still be within the will of God. But... If you have to sacrifice something in your spiritual life, if you have to give up uh, a strong walk with God in order to achieve that secular greatness, I think you're making a mistake. I think the priorities are out of balance. I believe that a Christian ought to be pressing toward the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That should be first and foremost in his or her heart before any thoughts of secular success. Jesus gave us a parable about the sower sowing seeds and some of those seeds fell on the ground and began to bring forth fruit, but thorns sprung up and choked that potential fruit. It, it choked what was growing and no fruit came of it. And when Jesus interpreted that parable, he said, it's the cares of this world. It's the lust of other things. It's the pleasures of this life. Paul said that no man that wars entangles himself with the affairs of this, this life so that he may please him, have chosen him to be a soldier. Uh, I believe Paul's comments goes perfectly with what Jesus said in that parable. You can get entangled. You can get ensnared. Those thorns can choke uh, a, a person's spiritual life. So secular ambition can be okay. It's not in and of itself sinful. 
But I believe any Christian would do well to really examine his heart and ask himself, is this secular ambition that I have, is it worth the time and energy I'm putting into it? Am I still able to achieve the will of God? Am I able to fulfill the will of God for my life? That, I believe, is the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. To be able to say one day as you stand before God, God, I did that which you asked me to do. I did my utmost to fulfill your will with my life. Now, as I say, there are some people, I believe, that it is the will of God for them to work hard, to maintain a good testimony in their workplace, and provide for their family, and the money that they would uh, receive from that work and from the promotions that they would get, they can support missionaries, they can support various ministries, they can support their local church, they can help people. There's a lot of good that can come from that. So I won't out and out uh, despise or rebuke secular ambition. It just needs to be kept in check. It needs to be put in its proper place. And the will of God needs to remain the ultimate prize for any uh, believer. So as I finish this up, let me just remind you of what Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10. He said, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. So if God has blessed you with a job, do the very best you can at it. And if you do a good job and you're a faithful, honest, hardworking employee, the laborer is worthy of his reward. There's a good chance you're going to get promoted, and that's not a bad thing. But don't forget that your hands can find a lot more to do than just be successful in the workplace. There's a lot of things your hands can do for Christ. So whatever your ambitions might be, just be sure that you're making a greater effort and have a greater desire to do something for God than for yourself. If this video has helped, you can click the like button. If you'd like to follow along with our Bible Q&A blog, you can click subscribe. Feel free to leave a Bible question in the comment section below or visit us on our Facebook page, Bible Baptist Church of Pachastruam. And if you live in town, we'd like to invite you to one of our services, and we hope to see you soon. May God bless and have a great day further.